Hey, what's up Aquamigos? How are you guys doing today? So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video on the evolution of my pool pond over the span of three years. And if you want to check that video out, I'm going to go ahead and put the link down in the description of this video. But today what I'm going to talk about is the four things that I've learned after owning a pool pond for three years. So just in case you're new here, this is what I'm talking about. This is my pool pond. It's just under 900 gallons. I believe it's something like 863 gallons or something like that. And I gotta say, I've learned a lot after owning this for three years. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. One of the first things that I learned is that you need to quarantine new fish. I remember when I first got this thing and I started getting fish for it, I would like willy nilly go to the pet store and then come back and put the fish straight in here without quarantining them. And that was a really bad idea, but I didn't know any better. And then of course, a little while later, after watching some YouTube videos and stuff, I learned that you need to quarantine new fish before adding them to your pond, just to make sure that they do not have any illnesses that could get your existing fish in your pond sick and potentially kill them. So it's very important to quarantine new fish because you definitely don't want to pick up sick fish from a pet store and add them directly into your pond because that could harm or kill the fish that you already have. So that was number one. Number one was quarantining new fish before adding them to your pond. The second thing I learned after owning a pool pond is that filtration is very important. I remember when I first got this thing, I was using the stock filtration system that the pool came with. It wasn't even a pond filter. Then after a little while, I got this thing right here. This is a Tetra waterfall filter. And then actually just recently over this past summer is I built this DIY trash can filter right here. And that thing is doing a great job. Having adequate filtration is what's going to stop your pond from getting like a lot of algae and stuff. It's gonna keep your fish healthy. And actually just last week, I posted a whole video on how to get rid of algae from your pond and it all has to do with filtration. So if you wanna check out that video, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description below because if you are getting algae in your pond, you definitely wanna watch that video. Now the third thing that I learned, which I did not account for at all, when I was first getting fish for this pond is that goldfish breed like crazy. Like if you look at all these fish I have in here, all these goldfish, most of them were born in this pond. I probably only started out with maybe like say 12 common goldfish. And now just look at how many I have. It's literally insane. So my advice to you guys would be if you do have a pond and if you are getting goldfish for your pond, start off with a very small amount because over the next couple of years, they're going to multiply like crazy. Now the fourth thing that I learned from owning a pool pond, and this is actually something that I learned right away, the first winter that I had this thing, is that you do not need heaters for a pond if you have cold water fish. However, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. The first thing is some people do like to keep fish that do need heaters outdoors, like say red tailed catfish or something like that. Then yeah, you definitely need like heaters and it could actually be really expensive to heat a pond. If you have like goldfish like I do or koi or I also have a dojo loach in here, those are all cold water fish and they do not need heaters in the winter. Um, I do get questions from some people who live in colder climates like where it might snow or the pond might ice over and those kinds of climates you definitely want to make sure you have a pond that is at least three feet deep and actually if you do live in one of those kind of regions I probably would not recommend getting a pool pond you definitely probably want to have a traditional pond in the ground because I do not know how this material would be in like a, a very cold climate. Like over here where I live in California, I live in the Los Angeles area, it doesn't really get that cold. So, you know, this pool pond does totally fine in the winter. But if you do live in an area where the top of the water will ice over, I would just play it safe and not go with a pool pond. You probably want an in-ground pond. And you may even want to consider getting a de-icer which will pretty much just make sure that there's always a hole on the top of the ice if your pond ice is over it'll make sure that there is always a hole on the top of that ice to make sure that there is gas exchange between the water and the air because of course your fish will still need to breathe so just to reiterate myself the four things that I learned are make sure you quarantine new fish before adding them to your pond number two 
was make sure you have adequate filtration. Number three was to take into consideration that goldfish breed a lot and you don't want to have an overstocked pond. And then number four is that you don't necessarily need heaters in a pond if you're just keeping cold water fish outdoors. And while we're on the topic of not needing heaters in ponds outdoors, check this out. So this is my mini guppy pond right here and I actually just took all the fish out of here. I had a bunch of guppies in here, fancy guppies, and I just took them all out of here at the beginning of this week because the temperatures where I live are dropping to below 60 degrees Fahrenheit during the nighttime. So I went ahead and took them all out of there and I put them back inside my guppy tank indoors. So this thing is completely empty now. I'm probably gonna go ahead and dismantle this maybe next week or so. I'll put these plants into the pool pond and you know, empty it out and we'll save it for next summer. And I'll probably set it up again next summer. But next time I'll definitely make sure to set it up earlier in the summer because, I, man, when did I set this up? I probably set this up near like the end of August or something. So I did it super late in the summer. I was only able to keep these guppies out here for like, I don't know, like a month or something. And before we end this video, guys, let's just go ahead and feed these fish real quick. Haven't fed them yet today. Oh, check it out, my dojo loach. If you guys ever want like a really fun fish to have in a pond, man, let me tell you, the dojo loaches are awesome fish to have in a pond. It's a really fun fish to have, super active. It's always like hunting for food. It's definitely gotta be one of my favorite fish. And I'll just give my butterfly koi a couple pellets real quick. All right, guys, so that's gonna be just about it for this video. Um, let me know what were the first things that you learned or that you had to learn when you first got into fish. Did you make any mistakes at the beginning like I did? Let me know what they were down in the comments below. And just real quick, guys, I do have one shout out for this video. I have a shout out for Hope Stubbs. Thank you so much, Hope, for being an Aquamigo. I really appreciate that. If any of you guys would like a shout out in next Friday's video, I post new fish videos every Friday. All you have to do is go down to the comments below and comment, I am an Aquamigo, and I will shout you out in next Friday's fish video. And just really quick, guys, I gotta go over here because someone with a lawnmower over there. But if you guys did like this video, I would really appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like, that would help me out so much. If you would like to see more videos by me in the future, make sure to go down there and hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell notifications button. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, I'll go ahead and put my handle right here. It's at YT underscore Tobias. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Peace.